in this deck and having two of them in the prize cards is going to be devastating. Uh, also because you have to use that Stormy Winds ability to get energy in play. So the fewer you have, the fewer opportunities you have to snowball those energy in play. Yeah, um, there, there's that handshake, by the way. So we are going to see oh. Eric Smith against Nittish Julep here. Both players at 3-0 and starting this round four. Uh, a rock rough start here for Nittish, but a top, oh, of, geez, Coco a top of Coco st start here for Eric. <laughs> Nittish immediately has to pick it up and read it. Uh, that is not a card you want to start with. That is supposed to be a surprise out of nowhere. <laughs> well, surprise. Yeah, <laughs> you drop it down, use the ability, and shock your opponent with the GX attack, but it's no surprise here. Uh, Tapu Koko GX is going to be the starter Pokemon, and uh, we will probably not be seeing that Tapu Thunder GX. <laughs> yeah, kind of hate that double retreat cost, too. It's going to have to find a floatstone to get out of there. Um, just so many things that you don't want to see the Tapu Koko as your starter for. And now Eric, of course, looking through his deck and finds the the bad news of uh, the two Rayquaza prized in his, well, in his prizes. Yep, and we see the first Rayquaza GX come down. Uh, Eric did discard a Grass Energy, so he's guaranteed to hit off of the Stormy Winds. It looks like not too bad of discards. Uh, How terrible would it have been if he would have discarded that Rayquaza, the final Rayquaza? Is that... <laughs> it would have been awful. Oh, yeah. man, I would have been scared to do that. There's a Max Elixir, by the way. Finds another Energy. Not two bad. Grass attached to that Rayquaza now. Yeah, and this is exactly what you need when you're playing this deck. You need to storm right out of the gates. You need to get as much energy as you can in play immediately so that you can put pressure on your opponent. Uh, that is exactly what this deck is aiming to do. Just put on so much pressure and hope your opponent misses a beat because once you start using Dragon Break, you're not going to stop. You're going to get prizes every turn. Absolutely. And now uh, Eric does play a Cynthia to try to draw himself six additional cards here. F wants to find that other Rayquaza. Wants to find more energies on this turn. Oh. And I see an interesting card in Eric's hand as well. I think that is a Marsh Shadow. Oh, yeah. I'm going to let card, loose. The card that uh, that started letting loose as early as uh, yesterday morning. And uh, it is here in day two Ooh. as well. It was not a one-hit wonder. And right away, he just starts to let loose. Remember, this is... Uh, the very first turn of the game, Nidish hasn't even uh, drawn a card yet yep. uh, to start the game to start his turn uh, of the game. So now Nidish is down to four cards in hand before he can even do anything. That's just not what you want to uh, what you want to see of your Nidish here because your opponent already has two energy in play to go with that. Yeah. Uh, definitely a very scary start here for Nidish. This card is so strong when you're going first. Uh, like you said, his opponent didn't even get to draw a card or play anything from his opening hand. He just went let loose uh, instead of starting the game with, you know, six cards. How about four? And I uh, hope they're good ones because I'm going to be attacking you next turn. And now he attaches his energy for the turn. And now that's three energy in play here for, for Eric on the first turn of the game. Of course, he has to pass as, you know, that he is the first player to go uh, to start this game. So now Nidish has to find cards as fast as possible, has to find something. He doesn't really have anything going for him outside of that Remoraid with an Octillery in hand, but no supporter in hand means it's going to be a very uh, uneventful turn here for Nidish. He just plays Field Blower uh, to say he did something as... Yeah, I don't actually know why he played the Field Blower there. And I would consider attaching an energy just because, yeah. you know, next turn all you're going to be able to do is Abyssal Hand, so might as well make a count. But you see exactly how you can get to 3-0 and with this Rayquaza GX deck. And, uh, yeah, I think Nidish will immediately regret playing that Field Blower as now we see the Fighting Fury Belt onto Rayquaza GX. Uh, but, yeah, Marshadow Let Loose has been a big tech this weekend in these Rayquaza decks. Because of this, you go first, you play a bunch of cards, and you go Let Loose... Good luck, opponent. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Nidish did not have the good luck on his side this time around as Nidish is going to be in a lot of trouble before he starts his second turn. Of course, that Rock Ruff is not going to be seeing in another turn. Uh, sure to be knocked out here. And uh, Eric here still just wants to get more energy in play, wants to start solidifying an additional attackers just in the rare case that that Rayquaza, Rayquaza gets knocked out uh, sometime in the near future. Yeah, he actually did not find an energy off of that Cynthia. So I wonder if he's going to go for another Rayquaza GX. He has no energy in his discard pile currently, and he's going to need to hit one off of the three discards. Otherwise, this is going to fail, and he's going to be stuck at three energy in play. And it's not the worst thing because he's still going to get a knockout. He's putting on a lot of pressure, but you really need to start building up to six or seven energy by the time your third turn rolls around. 
So these are three huge discards. There's that grass energy. Uh, so it, they were definitely huge discards, but they definitely helped Eric out here as he now just plays a, uh, a Latias uh. Prism Star, plays, uh, plays his own Peril City to get rid of a couple of uh, bad Pokemon to have on his bench. And now he's going to start uh, attacking with uh, Dragon Breath to knock out this Rockruff. Only a Remoraid left in play here for Nidish. Ugh. And with only energies in his hand, he's not even going to... He's getting two cards. Yeah, he's not even going to attach an energy before drawing. He's basically resigned himself to... Wow. He's <laughs> resigned himself to, have, to hitting basically what he hit right there. <laughs> he and did not want to attach because he says... He, I can understand the strategy. He feels like he's so far behind that... Uh, he needs. To, he feels like he needs to have a huge turn this turn, the, uh, on this particular turn. So it was a definitely a gambit to take, but it worked out for him at least so far, as he's now drawn seven additional cards and does get to attach an energy onto this Buzzwool, and uh, that Buzzwool now looking like it's going to be dealing a whole lot of damage without any type of issue here. This is uh, an excellent recovery. Yeah, eighty damage out of nowhere here for uh, for Buzzwool. Yeah, it's going to set up his next couple turns pretty well. Uh, so traditionally I found that the Buzzwool decks tend to be a little favored against Rayquaza decks because of the non-GX Buzzwool. Uh, when you get to four prize cards, just the fact that you can go uh, strong energy choice ban if you have Diancy Prism Star out, you can Sledgehammer for a two prize swing using this one energy attacker. It is such a difference maker in this matchup. And uh, you can see why this Buzzwool is so popular this weekend. Uh, Sledgehammer is incredible. So there's a couple of Fighting Fury belts attached to both of these Rayquazas. Um, I mean, it, it makes for, for them being very, very durable. But at this point, obviously, once that Rayquaza gets knocked out, I mean, you're out of energy. You're out of, you're out of things to, to be able to deal damage with. And that's where your Rayquaza is just not going to be able to take the final few prizes. So Eric... Definitely not a, in what I would consider to be a safe position here. And, of course, if he knocks out this Buzzwell, he's also going to be going down to four prizes himself, which is not what you want to do against this Buzzwell deck. Sledgehammer gets stronger and stronger as your opponent takes his fourth prize uh, or his actually, second prize. It seems like he's okay. He's With that Max Elixir, that has stabilized his energy a little bit. Uh, he's gotten up to five. He can attach, get up to six. So even if this active one goes down, uh, if he can keep that Fighting Fury Belt in play, he can string back-to-back -back knockouts on the non-GX Buzzwool. So seems like he's still fine to keep up the pressure. But, I mean, in, in terms of prizes, Nidish is going to even it right up, and we know how quickly things can swing back around with B-String. Sure. Uh, I do feel like losing three energy there and now all of a sudden relying on your opponent not finding one of his field blowers is just a very, very dangerous situation to be in. Of course, not like he has very many other options. So it, it's not like he's making a, a mistake here, but it's just a very dangerous position to be in if you're, if you're... But at the same time, hitting that Rayquaza out of your prizes is beautiful. You love to watch that prize uh, hit your hand as now Eric is going to have additional attackers and more importantly, more energy to come into his hand. Uh, interesting. Nidish chooses to Abyssal Hand before playing anything. Uh, only needs, well, I guess with the Fighting Fury Belt, things get a little more difficult uh, as that Rayquaza GX still has plenty of HP left, 140 to be exact. So so you're still going to need a Diancy or a Choice Band. Yeah, so I, I think he was trying to draw into a Strong or a Beast Energy just to be safe, but now it's down to this end to six. He needs to find some kind of damage modifier uh, or a field blower. If Nidish misses this knockout, he's going to be in a horrendous position. Would you have played the fighting energy before playing the end? Or would you have given yourself additional uh, outs to hit the uh, strong energy? Uh, it's, it's close, a, right? It is close, yeah. It depends on how many strong energy he's gone through. Like if there's only two left in his deck, I'd probably attach. But if there's three plus a beast energy, I think I'd just go for it. Well, he hits the strong energy, but I do not see any damage modifiers yet. Mm, there's an Ultra Ball. Yeah, Ultra Ball, as long as the Diancy is not prized, which I do not believe it is, um, will mean a knockout here onto this Rayquaza, which is huge for him. It certainly is. He's got some tough choices on what cards to discard. It's like he's going to take a potentially greedy route here and Ultra Ball away his Professor Sycamore. He's already used Abyssal Hand for the turn. I can respect that. Uh, it is a little risky if 
Eric next turn is able to Guzma out the Octillery and knock it out. That can leave Nidish in a terrible position with no draw supporter in his hand. And uh, that is one of the ways you can kind of still disrupt these Buzzwold decks. They are incredibly reliant on Octillery's Abyssal Hand as the game progresses. So whenever you can take out that Octillery, it tends to be a good idea. Sure. Uh, such a small board state here for um, for Nidish. So if Eric does have the opportunity to, to Guzma up that Octillery, I'm sure he'll take it. Um, there's no threat really from Nidish's board otherwise. Definitely the most powerful card in uh, on the field for Nidish is that Octillery. Now, uh, Eric potentially promoting the uh, the Rayquaza before he draws his turn. Um, and he does choose to do so. Now, because he has another Rayquaza in hand, he has plenty of options before he starts to uh, play any supporter cards. And uh, they're just fixing the field here a little bit before, before Eric's turn really starts to take off. So many options available to Eric, and he discards an energy plus uh not really sure what the other card was in order for him to ultra ball that ultra ball can find him that rayquaza uh, he dumped a cynthia and a grass energy to go grab this rayquaza gx he's got to get some energy in play oh actually he's looking at the tapu lele gx i think he already has professor sycamore yeah. in hand i wonder what he's going to go for with this well i guess we'll see oh he's going for guzma and he is going after the Octillery. Now, does he have a Float Zone in hand? I don't think so. I think he has to pay an energy to retreat. So maybe a little bit of... Hefty uh, cost. Poor sequencing from Eric. If he had promoted something besides the Rayquaza GX, he could have kept another energy in play. Right. But uh, I think he's doing the important thing, getting rid of Octillery. Now he's out of Sledgehammer range, so... If Nidish doesn't find a supporter, he could be in some trouble. Uh, a Beast Ring would also be helpful. 100 damage onto that Octillery. And just like you said, he uh, he took that, you know, he took that little gambit there by discarding the uh, the Sycamore. And now with that Octillery gone, it could come back to backfire as now we see a Buzzwell GX get a strong energy attached onto it. Um, the Buzzwell with just a single energy attached to it in the active position just is not the scariest thing in the world if you're, uh, if you're Eric here. And it is taking a look at that Latias Prism Star, perhaps a little unfamiliar with these new cards from Sun and Moon, Celestial Storm. Uh, this entire Rayquaza GX deck is comprised of cards from that new expansion. Yeah, it looks like Nidish is just going to be aggressive. So Nidish sees that Eric has a single card hand. I mean, he's thinking, well, best case scenario here. If my opponent's got no options, then I can definitely start to take over the game with uh, well-timed Guzma. But, of course, we know that uh, the last card in his hand was that Sycamore. It sure is. So there we do see Professor Sycamore. And we do see a float stone drawn off of that. This is where not having a lot of energy in play is going to backfire for Eric. Uh, right now he can only do 130 30, damage yeah. with uh, Dragon Break, which is a two-hit knockout, which is fine um, as long as Nidish doesn't top deck a B-string. <laughs> If he could find a Rayquaza plus a Max Post or Max uh, Elixir, for example, I mean that might be asking for too much. But <laughs> <laughs> I would get there, but yeah, he he has none of those cards. Yeah, and he already played a supporter for the turn, so that's just not going to happen. He's eyeing his field blower, but yep, going to get rid of his own Parallel City. Uh, even though it was nice early on to discard some junk on his bench, it is really limited the amount of Rayquaza GX he could put down, and he actually gets rid of his Float Stone so he can attach a Fighting Fury Belt and protect that Tapu Lele. Interesting play there by uh, by Eric, as he does uh, deal 130 damage onto this oh. Buzzwell GX. Now a Cynthia from the top here. Huge card here for for Nidish. It's putting it lightly. Yeah. <laughs> that is a massive top deck. Just a huge, huge, huge top deck here for Nidish as he's able to shuffle his, well, his one card hand into his deck and draw six new ones. Um, yeah, uh, about as timely a, a top deck as you can have there if you're Nidish. And uh, you're, you're going to have to see if he's going to be able to pull something off from this. But still, I mean, it's way better, a way better position than he was in to start this turn. Yeah, he needs to draw a B string here he can find one, he's in great shape. If not, he's still not in a good spot. Well, there is no B-string yet. 
And well, because uh, he's already played a supporter, I guess there's no no B screen this whole turn. In my professional opinion, this is bad for for Nidish. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Glad we can agree on that. So Nidish is just oh man, it's just it's such a rough spot because uh, your Buzzwell's obviously going to get knocked down on the following turn. Your opponent's going to go down to a single prize. You're not going to be able to uh, B string for the entire game, and that's kind of well, plan A, B, and C. So without those options available to you, man, that that artillery getting knocked out was just absolutely backbreaking, and that absolutely was the uh, the the straw that broke the cam camel's back in this match. Yeah, I mean, this this is one of the many decks that relies on. Pokemon with abilities to draw extra cards as the game progresses. If you can take out the Octillery, this deck can fizzle quite a bit. It doesn't always work, but it's uh, usually worth trying. Well, he does do what basically what the only thing he can do, which is just put a whole lot of damage onto these Pokemon. And now it's Eric's turn to uh, keep things going. Of course, we know that Buzzwell GX will get knocked out by the end of this turn, but will Eric have any additional plays? Will he be able to start setting up another Rayquaza, for example? Looks like the answer to that is no so far. Eric's got a little bit of a painful hand. He's got a Sycamore, which is good, but he's going to have to discard two of his remaining Guzma, and he might not have many left. I think he's already played his Pal Pad as well, and he's wondering if it's even worth playing this Sycamore. Right. I was wondering the same thing, as it seems like those Guzmas may be more important than what Sycamore can provide. And he's just running low on everything. Oh, look at how much energy he has in his hand. The problem here is he would like to use Stormy Winds and get some extra energy out, but... <laughs> look at that deck. He's got like four cards left. Yeah. Uh, well... Earlier he did Rescue Stretcher in the Tapu Koko GX. This oh, yeah, I think could he nailed be, it perfectly. This could be the opportunity to pull that out, use that Arrow Trail ability, and uh, send out a fresh Pokemon to knock out this buzzball, but it looks like he's just sticking with his main man, Rayquaza GX. Going to go down to one prize card, and to be fair, Nidish does need a lot here to get the knockout. But if he can take down that one Rayquaza GX, he's probably in decent shape. He needs a uh, field blower, choice band, and strong energy? Yeah, I think so. There's well, there's choice band. band. Uh, well, there's choice band. <laughs> <laughs> there sure is. <laughs> oh. There's B-String. Well, oh, man. It doesn't work anymore. Just so untimely. Uh, so many things just not going well here for Nidish. And it looks like that might be the game here as Nidish just honestly can't even knock out this Rayquaza, let alone um, survive another attack from it. Yeah. All that Eric needs is an energy. Uh, if he plays a basic grass or lightning energy next turn, he wins the game. We've yeah, thanks, seen his hand. We thanks. know that half his hand is energy. Yeah, thanks to the Fighting Fury belt, he'll get to exactly 190. Yeah, because of because of Eric's current hand, I think it's uh, with Caster Vision. We know that uh, that the game's basically over right now. But Nidish still doesn't. Nidish is still trying got, to see. Still got a chance here. He can pull out that Lycan Rock GX. I think that Rock has been in play for a turn. I was about to ask you that. I don't know if it is. Well, if not, then. <laughs> This is over. But uh, if he can bloodthirsty eyes, try to stall for time, and jet punch something on the bench. Um, okay, yeah. well, I guess it is. It has been in play for the entire turn. Okay. So, and okay. This is actually smart, too. You can bring out the Tapu Lele GX. Because it doesn't have a float stone on it, it has Fighting Fury Belt. Have to discard to retreat, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So smart play here from Nidish. Uh, this is going to force Eric to have a way to get multiple energy in play, which he does have a Rayquaza GX in hand, so that should work. The question is, does Nidish have another field blower left in his deck? Uh, I think Eric should be able to win this turn. Uh, if he can Stormy Winds, get an energy out, and then attach for the turn, that should be game over. 100, yep. You should be right. Max Elixir. Does he have any energy left in his deck? No, he does not. There's only two cards left in the deck. Yeah, and it's worth noting, uh, even though when you use Stormy Winds, you have to discard the top three cards of your deck. If you can discard at least one, you can still use the ability. Sure. So there's... I don't know if Eric knows that. Um, <laughs> that's actually kind of an obscure thing. But 
that is the ruling. As long as you have any cards to discard, you can do it. Looks like Eric does know that as he discards the last two cards in his deck, finds the last energy, and it looks like he found the play that will earn him the victory this game as he's gonna, uh, he's about to go up one game to nothing against Nidish, uh, but, not, uh, but not without Nidish putting up a fight. Nidish found every available option to him and did what he could to not, uh, to not lose this game, but at the end of the day, uh, Rayquaza, <laughs> Dragon Break, a whole lot of damage. Yep. That was a very interesting first game. Uh, Eric will take it as he continues his nice streak here with this Rayquaza GX deck. Um, but you can see it can go either way. If Nidish drew a little bit better, uh, if he maybe didn't discard the Professor Sycamore off of sure. that Ultra Ball earlier in the game, perhaps things would have been different. And also Eric went first and <laughs> dropped the Marsh Shadow turn one. Yeah. And so it's actually kind of impressive that the game was as close as it was. Yeah, Eric really making this deck look so good. Uh, the fact that he went six and whatever, uh, he earned six victories in at most eight rounds, and uh, now he's 3-0, potentially going to be 4-0 with one more game win. I mean, that's just an incredible run to, to be on, and for it to be during the World Championships is just, that's a dream come true for most people. Yeah. So we're going to shuffle up here for game number two between Nidish and Eric. Uh, in game number two, Nidish will be able to go first. Um, you know, I think part of what happened there is uh, Nidish didn't seem to be too familiar with what Eric was playing. Uh, even though Rayquaza GX was one of the most hyped decks coming sure. into the World Championships, uh, looked like he was picking up his opponent's cards, reading what they were doing. Maybe he has not practiced this matchup very much because uh, as the cards came out, the hype for this deck did die down a lot. A lot of players said, oh, this is not as good as I thought it was. Sure. And uh, a lot of players dismissed it completely. So Nidish might not have even tested this matchup at all, saying, eh, why would I play test against a quote-unquote bad deck? Right? Why would you waste your time doing that if you thought nobody was going to play it? I think one of the keys to victory here for Nidish is going to be to really take advantage of your opponent, uh, his, rely his reliance on things like Fighting Fury Belt. Um, if you can time your field lowers... Uh, way better than he did game one, for example, um, then that could very, very well uh, spell a victory for him in this second game, especially as he's going first. And sure enough, he is setting up some bench Pokemon. Game two is about to begin. Remember, Nidish Julep is down one game to nothing against Eric Smith in this battle of two aggressive Titan decks, uh, Buzzwell versus Rayquaza GX. And we have a Tapu Lele versus Rockruff start right with a handshake. Of course, Diancie Prism start is the bench Pokemon here for uh, for Nidish. Just a Cynthia right here to start things off here for uh, for Nidish, but at least he's got some Pokemon already in play. Of course, wants to start getting some energy in play, and um, and that's about it. All you can ask for out of your first turn. Yeah, he's going to be hoping to just get maybe a Buzzwool down, get a basic energy or any energy, just attach for the turn, and uh, probably get a Remoraid down as well. That's really your ideal first turn when you go first with this deck. Play an energy, get down some basics. Uh, on the other side, Eric does start off with Tapu Lele GX, which you might look at and be like, oh, that's an unfortunate starting Pokemon. But one of the bad parts about the Rayquaza deck is it has almost zero good starting Pokemon. Uh, Rayquaza GX has three retreat, and you can't use its ability when you start with it. Tapu Lele, again, you can't use its ability when you start with it. I mean, you can start with Latias Prism Star. That is the best starting Pokemon. But everything else, you need, like, Floatstone to move your active. Otherwise, you're just wasting resources. Yeah, it makes you wonder why people don't play four, uh, four Floatstone in their lists. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're no, uh, we're no uh, members of the Wacky Workshop, so... <laughs> Yeah, looks like Nidish does get Brooklet Hill, does everything he wants, gets the fighting energy under the rock ruff. Finds uh, that Remoraid. The fighting energy on the rock ruff, typically safe, but I have seen plenty of very good turn one Rayquaza GX turns. Uh, it is not outside the realm of possibility that this rock ruff gets wiped out by the end of this turn. I would love to see something along those lines happen. Obviously nothing against Nidish, but <laughs> just to see something... As uh, as incredible as that start would be, uh, would be eye opening for a lot of players and a lot of uh, viewers, I believe. As of course, Rayquaza is a powerful deck, but when it's at its most powerful, that's when it's uh, that's when it's just 
downright scary. It probably has the highest ceiling of any deck. Um, it's also very volatile. Sometimes you just discard all your good cards and you lose. But other times you end your second turn with seven energy in play and you go 210 damage, knock out your turn. And your opponent goes, uh, <laughs> well, what's my game plan here? I don't know. <laughs> and there we do see the first stormy winds. Uh oh, right. oh, gets rid of a Rayquaza right away. That is what can happen. That's why you need to play plenty of recovery cards in these decks. We do see Super Rod, Rescue Stretcher, Pal Pad all being played in this deck. And the thing is, it wasn't even just one Rayquaza. It was one Rayquaza and then two other relevant cards that you're going to want to see throughout the remainder of the match. So... Yeah, sometimes it can backfire. And when it does, you start wondering why you're playing the deck. Uh, Eric actually has an Ultra Ball, too. He could have played that before using the first Stormy Winds. Uh, and he's trying to figure out if he wants to discard an energy with this Ultra Ball. Looks like yes. And I wonder if he'll grab... Maybe a top of Lele? Yeah. Uh, he's got a supporter in his hand. He, he has one Rayquaza GX in hand already and one Grass on the discard. He could take another Rayquaza GX uh, and just kind of gamble that he's going to keep getting energy off of Stormy Winds. But it looks like he's playing it a little safer and just going to go for one. He's not going to take anything out of his deck. Let's see what he discards this time. Just three more relevant cards. Yikes. Looks like he has discarded two Max Elixir. That's actually pretty big. Yeah, and that Guzma, also not a card that you want to be seeing in your discard pile without getting good use out of it. But uh, those Max Elixirs are just, that's what, that's how you get these broken turns uh, at the beginning of the game. And seeing them get discarded away because of your own Stormy Winds is just not ideal, obviously. Now that, the, that Rayquaza with the Fighting Fury Bolt and two energy on it is just so threatening. Yeah, so Nidish got to breathe in a sigh of relief that his Pokemon did not get knocked out that turn. Uh, I think Eric, if he really wanted to reach for it, he could have played down. He had a third Rayquaza GX in his hand. He had a he has a mysterious treasure. Um, I guess he doesn't have Tapu Koko GX in his hand, but if he were able to get three Lightning Energy in play, he could have dropped down Tapu Koko, used Arrow Trail, and then just gone in with Sky High Claws to knock out the Rockruff because. Taking out Rockruff is a big deal, especially one that's got an energy. Just but. don't just don't tap his thunder. <laughs> All right, so. Do you want to repeat it yesterday? <laughs> 50 damage GX attack. I'm glad you caught the joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, there are four bench Pokemon on the bench here for, for Nidish, and he plays a choice band onto his Buzzwool before playing an N. Uh, that N will be drawing both players a new hand of six as neither player has really attacked yet early in this game. And uh, that Rock Ruff is still, I mean, it's its threatening for sure, but he he has to find another energy and he has to find that Lycanroc GX and uh, he's got to do that off his six card N. He's already used Octillery's uh, Abyssal Hand. Yeah, and Lycanroc's not even that good here. Uh, Eric was very smart not benching too many Pokemon. That's probably why he didn't want to play down another Rayquaza GX. Uh, once you bench the third one, then you enter the territory of things like Diancie and Strong Energy or Choice Band, things that make it easier for your opponent to use Dangerous Rogue GX for a knockout. So Eric playing more conservatively so that he does not walk into that Dangerous Rogue GX. Uh, Buzzwool gets a Strong Energy attached to it. So the thing is, are you just giving up that rock roof with one energy for nothing? Uh, I think he's probably going to retreat. He's got Floatstone. Oh, okay, there's that Floatstone. Yeah, you can Sledgehammer for some damage. And he actually has Ultra Ball in hand. Um, he, he could grab Lycanroc GX and just soften up one of the Rayquaza on the bench. I think that's a pretty reasonable play. Well, he's playing that Ultra Ball. He... Seems like there's no better target for his uh, Ultra Ball than that uh, Lycanroc. So I agree with you here. And uh, sure enough, that Lycanroc will be found with the Ultra Ball and Bloodthirsty Eyes will be able to bring up that Rayquaza GX with uh, with that Fighting Fury Belt on it. Um, it's just, it's got so many hit points when, when you have the, the Fighting Fury Belt attached to it that you really do have to try to get that first blow onto it. Otherwise, it could just run away with the game. 
Yeah, and a lot of these Rayquaza lists don't run Fighting Fury Belt. A lot of them play Choice Band instead because of the rise of Field Blower in all these decks. Now pretty much every deck at the World Championship is playing two Field Blowers. So uh, you don't expect Fighting Fury Belt to stay attached very long, but sometimes it just does. Sometimes your opponent has to Sycamore away a Field Blower early. They don't draw it at the right time. And every turn that Rayquaza is in play is another knockout it's getting. So uh, I like the inclusion of Fighting Fury Belt, even though some players prefer Choice Band. Uh, it, it does feel like the more game-changing card sometimes. Yeah, I think a lot of players agreed uh, coming into this tournament because I, I was not expecting to see as many Fighting Fury Belts as we saw in day one, but it seems like pretty much every... Um, well, maybe not every deck, but quite a few decks uh, chose to go with that Fighting Fury Belt option as Choice Band has played much less than I expected it to be this weekend. Now, All right, so Eric, a Cynthia here for, for Eric, by the way. Yeah, and Eric decided to attach his energy to his benched Rayquaza GX. His active only has two energy on it, so right. he can't even use Dragon Break. Uh, that signals to me he is digging for that Tapu Koko, and he wants to get that Rayquaza out of there. Now, that Tapu Koko obviously will knock out that Buzzwool, but then your energy are on it. <laughs> yep. and, you know? Uh, yep, and they're going away real fast. <laughs> you're putting your, yeah, you're putting a lot of eggs in one basket there. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know what else he's going for. He doesn't play Switch or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, he'd have to have a Field Blower and a Floatstone. It's pretty much the only other play he'd be able to make there. Yeah, it seems like that Lycan Rock was just huge for your Fernandish. Yeah. We see an well. Actually, we don't see an ultra ball. That's a mysterious treasure. Yeah, I think he's going to mysterious treasure get another Rayquaza up and running, and he might have to settle for that Tempest GX and just draw a new hand of ten cards. It's not going to be a good spot for him. Uh, his other option, uh, he could uh, mysterious treasure for the Latias Prism Star. Oh, it looks like you have some. Oh, he's yeah. He was, much, he was debating on the field blower. Field blower. Uh, chose not to get rid of the floatstone on the lichen rock, and um, and just got rid of the Brooklyn Hill instead. Wow, he just passes the turn. That's brutal. Unbelievable. Uh, I just did not expect that kind of a turn out of Eric here. I really expected that Buzzwell to get knocked out, and um, uh, that just didn't happen. Uh, so now, a hundred damage on this Rayquaza, which has not attacked at all, and it's got two energy and a fighting three belts attached to it. So that's a lot, a lot of resources spent on this Rayquaza for, and to get no mileage out of it would just be, I mean, it would be ter downright terrible for, you, for, for Eric. Yeah. Now the Rayquaza does still have uh, 120 HP remaining, I think. Um, should be in a decent spot here. Well, how decent? Uh, 70 damage, 90 damage. If he finds a uh, choice band, he's going to knock it out. Yeah, he did feel blower away the choice band, though. I think Nidish kind of assumed he had a knockout there. <laughs> I think he forgot about his choice band being gone. Uh, at the very least, you can set these things up where uh, if you do draw sure. field blower later, you get a free knockout, basically. These, car these decks don't play any healing cards. And, of course, the jet punch could also knock out this Rayquaza, right? Yeah. But, yeah, that is one of the downsides of fighting Fury Belt. Sometimes you can... Uh, get blown out by a uh, field blower at a later time, and it, it feels terrible, right? You, you have to discard the Pokemon, it gets knocked out. Your opponent gets a four-prize swing, basically. Uh, it's basically like they have a knockout on board, but um, they still get to take advantage of things like N in the meantime. Yeah, but he's got to find that field blower, and he's uh, he, he has a very limited amount of time to be able to do so. So... Um, Eric still obviously doesn't feel great about his position, but still not looking too uh, too terrible here for him, as he does have a lot of cards available to him in his hand, very relevant ones as well. Uh, I would want to see him find another Rayquaza this turn, and I think he agrees as that Rescue Stretcher finds that Rayquaza. Ooh. Stormy wins, gets rid of more good stuff, and no energy there. Get rid of that Tapu Koko GX. And wow. no energy in his discard pile. Just a complete whiff. Oh, wow. I did not expect there to be no energy in his discard pile. I, wow. <laughs> See the good and the bad of the Rayquaza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, I mean, at the same time, if you're Eric, you still can't feel too bad about the, the bad when you're 3-0 after, uh, after making it through day one. But still, uh, it's it's just, it never feels good to, to stormy wind and, and miss, and uh, not only miss, but get rid of more and more great cards out of your deck. And a Guzma here from Eric. Yeah, I think he should go after Octillery. Uh, the Lycan Rock is very, very tempting here. Uh, you can wipe that off the board, take away your opponent's big GX attack, but then you walk right into Sledgehammer, and your opponent already has a Buzzwole with too strong energy on it, so walking into Sledgehammer does not feel like a good idea to me, but looks like Eric says, all right, I just don't want to get hit by Dangerous Rogue. Oh, man, well, the, the problem is that you... You're not going to get hit by Dangerous Rogue, but you're still going to get one hit KO'd. Exactly. Um, and it's on board, right? It's not right. even a mystery. Uh, it's it, it, exactly 180 damage. Sledgehammer literally might as well read Dangerous Rogue GX without the, the GX part of it. Yeah. Um, it's the same effect there. You do take another another prize, but, I mean, it's coming at such a big cost. I don't even know if I would have played the Guzma there. I think that taking taking care of that buzzle with two uh, strong energy is already a really, really good effect, and you don't have to spend a, uh, a supporter card to, to do anything otherwise. And then being able to uh, knock out a, uh, a GX on your following turn would, never, would let you avoid uh, a huge sledgehammer from your opponent. But either way, uh, Eric did calculate his, uh, his play, and he chose to go with the Lycanroc, and now we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out here for him as Nidish... Um, now is going to be able to get a very easy knockout on that Rayquaza GX. Yeah, and I feel like if you're going to go for that play, you should just use the Rayquaza that already has 180 damage on it. Uh, you're going to get knocked out this turn. You might as well lose force the Pokemon your, that's... Yeah, gonna, force your opponent into a Guzma. Yeah, or Finding Field Blower. Yeah. By Let's the way, see. I think Nidish might have found a Field Blower, no? I thought I saw it in the back of his hand, but maybe not. Looks like a Beast Ring... Going to be able to charge up that benched Buzzbowl GX. Nidish looks to be in complete control I only this see, second game. I only see one field blower in the deck right now. So either the other one's in his hand, the discard pile, or the prizes. I think we'll find out shortly. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No, nope. not in the hand. Uh, yeah, Sledgehammer 120 plus... 20, 40, 60. That is 180. That is a knockout there. So that's uh, two prizes here for Nidish as he ties things up at four prizes apiece. But Eric's three energy are gone. And uh, two energy are on a on a Rayquaza that's just a field blower away from being knocked out. So that's just, it's a really, really rough spot to be in if you're Eric. Um, the clock is ticking for you. And you just have to hope that your opponent doesn't find a field blower. Pretty much, yeah. Or a Guzma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the problem is, if Eric doesn't have Guzma this turn, he's not going to take a GX knockout. Uh, and that just does not bode well for him. Nidish has prizes lined up every turn of this game, and he's going to knock out GXs for the next two turns. It's almost on board already. The Buzzwell GX just needs another energy, uh, and then he just needs Lycanroc GX plus another energy. And you can see clearly how he's going to close out this game. Eric, it's a little less clear. If he has to knock out this non-GX Pokemon, he goes down to three prize cards, which means he still needs two more attacks to win. And I just don't think he's going to get those turns. Rayquaza now gets its uh, third energy on it. I, I mean, I completely agree with you, but at the same time, I think if you're, if you're in Eric's spot, you feel like there's a marginal chance of you still being able to pull this off, especially when you draw that Marsh Shadow, for example. <laughs> um, like, these are things that they're not likely to work out for you, especially given your opponent's Octillery and whatnot. But that's about all you can hope for is hope that your opponent stumbles and um, and maybe makes a key misplay. Yeah. Uh, I guess the way he could avoid losing is if he can get a Fighting Fury Belt on this fresh Rayquaza and if Nidish never draws Field Blower... Or Guzma. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, it, the active one will have 220 HP, so... I mean, there's, there's a lot Nidish could have. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be rough. Yeah. You're expecting your opponent to basically not do anything the rest of the game. 
Yeah, I mean, like we said, that jet punch already knocks out that Rayquaza on the bench. And dealing 50 damage to the active Rayquaza is not bad either. Uh, I think the dice might have gotten messed up on the bench Rayquaza too. Right now... 20, 160, 170, 190? Maybe not. No, I think it's right. Okay. We're good. <laughs> All right. Either way. Uh, we have let loose. Well... How loose did we get, though? Um, <laughs> four, four cards, cards worth. <laughs> four cards for each player. To remember. Pass. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, there's a Guzma, Beast Energy, another Guzma. Uh, Nidich's hand is pretty good off those four. Uh, Parallel, Parallel City. City. Yeah. What do you get rid of here if you're Nidish? Oh, man. Diancy, maybe? I. No, it's Eric. He's Parallel City oh, oh, himself. Oh, jeez, you're right. Okay. And I would have considered discarding the damage for Quasar. Exactly. Um, I don't. I don't know you're what's left in his deck. Yeah, you're uh, still knocking out that Buzzwool. I don't know if you can get GX knockouts if you wipe away that much energy off your board, but it's tempting. Maybe Eric just thinks he can't win if Nidish draws Field Blower, so no point in trying to go for it. Huh? Just pretend your opponent never draws it, because if they do, you're going to lose. Well, Eric down to three prizes now. So Buzzwool GX coming out. Still no. Well, by the way, he's got a lot of cards that he can't get rid of in his hand, so he's not going to be able to Abyssal Hand for too much. Yeah, but he but does find... Strong energy. That's a beast Beast energy. energy, sorry. Only doing 210, though. Lycanroc going to be able to Bloodthirsty Eyes up that Rayquaza uh, with uh, no Fighting Fury Belt and only one energy on it. Abyssal Hand going to draw two cards here. Uh, choice Band and another Octillery, so still no Field Blower. Hmm. We can put the choice band on, and this does reduce the number of benched Pokemon for Eric. So this could turn into whether or not Nidish draws an energy next turn. Does okay, knuckle so impact for the two prize knockout? Eric has five energy in play, so he's dealing 160. One more gets the knockout on this Buzzwool GX. And he has it in hand, so he will be able to knock out that Buzzwool, which means Lycanroc is going to be the last possible option here for, for Nidish. Will Eric bench any additional Pokemon? This one's going to come down to the wire. We know Nidish has the triple Guzma in his hand. But if he has one more energy card, he's going to tie this series up using that dangerous Rogue GX. Oh, man. Really close. Now would be a good time for a max potion. <laughs> <laughs> um, Although that even that wouldn't even help because then you <laughs> you'd lose all your energy. Okay, well he does have the energy he needs, so he's going to be able to knock out this Buzzwool. He plays an additional bench Pokemon. No, he doesn't. I, I mean, don't think that particularly matters. Like if your opponent has Guzma, they can knock out your Rayquaza with thirty on it or thirty HP left. True, true, true. Because there's the field blur already means a uh, victory. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if they can play a Guzma or, or a Field Blower, yeah. Sure. You already lose. Right. So it's it's down to Nidish Although eating. This does make it so, well, a strong energy wins now. Uh, right now it's doing 200. Yeah, so now a strong energy gets a knockout on the active. Um, why does it deal 200 right now? Uh, choice band. So that's 180. Diancy. Oh, Diancy's still in play. Yeah. Oh, wow. I forgot about the Diancy being in play. All right. Um, so, huge turn here for Nidish. He has three Guzma in his hand, and an Abyssal Hand is at his disposal. He's got uh, a Super Rod and an Ultra Ball, so he can get down pretty low. Just does an he, energy. All he needs. Is he going to send out like No, rock? you don't send out like <laughs> rock there. So okay. Good. Octillery. Oh, there there's that is. energy. It's okay. It's pretty much over now at this point. All he has to do is play the Guzma and we'll be going to game three. Well, Does that, play that Guzma. That was not fun. I wanted to see the Abyssal Hand. <laughs> <laughs> he just drew it right away. All right, so Nidish ties it up the series one game apiece. Uh, and we got about six minutes left. Wow. Um, just wow. Uh, I think <laughs> I think the key play there was obviously when he bloodthirsty eyes the, uh, the Rayquaza and then Eric just said pass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at that point, there was just so much unanswered damage here from from Nidish 
that Nittish was able to kind of just snowball a victory out of there. Um, the fact that Eric just kind of passed his turn with no, literally no plays um, just gave Nittish a huge advantage. And we saw how eventually he was able to take it, uh, take care of that advantage with just a simple Guzma to uh, finish knocking out the already heavily damaged Rayquaza. Yeah, the non-G Exposable is the difference maker in this matchup. Uh, it can lead off just poking for relevant damage. It's uh, it's annoying to knock out. And then when it comes to that four prize turn, Sledgehammer just gets a one-hit knockout on a Rayquaza GX for one energy on a non-GX Pokemon. It is such a swing in the game. And it's all thanks to those damage-boosting cards, the Choice Band, Strong Energy, Diancy Prism Star. And uh, it's just incredible how much it changes this matchup. Yeah, but now uh, Eric's going to get to go first. And with so little time left on the clock, I think... I think we're very fortunate to be seeing these two decks in action because they're about the only two decks that I think can realistically have any type of shot at winning uh, within the time limit. I mean, of course, it seems very unlikely still, but uh, if any deck's going to have a shot at it, it's going to be a deck like Rayquaza, which can deal 180 damage on turn two. And, um, and of course, Buzz will be able to take very early knockouts and hoping your opponent doesn't play any additional Pokemon. Well, Diancy Prism Star prized for Nidish. And I think Eric is just... Uh, crossing his fingers saying, I hope you start with one Pokemon in play uh, because we're about to let loose. <laughs> we're going to let a little loose here. Uh, but first, we're going to be playing our turn down. Remember, Remoraid is just about uh, as dangerous a start as you can have. There's just so little hit points there for that Remoraid. Um, but still, Mysterious Treasure. Ooh. Wow, right, right away he finds that Marshadow. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's taking it out of his deck. He's got another search card. He just wants to make sure he doesn't discard it. Tapu Koko start again, by the way. Just such an unfortunate start to have. Yeah, well, none of his Pokemon are good to start with except Latias. So. I think about as bad as you get is Tapu Koko, though. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. All right, so we see one Ultra Ball for Rayquaza GX. Already two energy in the discard pile, so Stormy Winds is going to hit. He's got a Float Stone in hand, and he already grabbed that Mars Shadow, so he is going to let it ride. This is what Rayquaza is all about. Only three minutes remaining in the round, so you definitely get the feeling that Eric's going to want to do this as soon as possible. And um, now he attaches that float zone onto his top of Coco before letting loose. Ooh. Both players shuffling their hands back into their decks. We saw this in game one, mm -hmm. and we saw how this did not play out well for Nidish at all. This is how you win a game in under five minutes. Crack your knuckles and <laughs> shuffle your deck. <laughs> now Nidish has tons of ways to get basic Pokemon. There's Brooklet Hill. There's Ultra Ball. He runs a ton of basics. There's so many supporters. He could very easily draw out of this. But he could also just draw, like, four energy and lose the game. Well, Palpad, not what you want to be seeing on a turn one let loose. Oh, Tapu Lele, though. That's good. Yeah, and Guzma, not too bad either. Um, Tapu Lele will be wonder tagging in right away. Uh, we haven't seen a supporter yet, right, from Eric? Nope. Yeah, that's one of the nice things about Marshadow. It is a... Pokemon based way, a basic Pokemon to draw extra cards. Uh, we saw this a lot back when Shaman EX was in the standard format. Uh, you would see turns just get extended. You know, you'd play your Professor Sycamore and go, oh, I didn't draw what I needed. Then you'd see players play Ultra Ball, grab Shaman EX, draw more cards. Uh, having Mars Shadow in your deck gives you that kind of an option where even though you've played a supporter, you can have another shot to draw cards. I think you pass right now if you're right. Now you yeah, send out the Rayquaza yeah. pass. Do want to get the Floatstone field blowered? Remember, only about a minute and change left in the clock. Every second counts. He's considering playing that Fighting Fury belt, but there's just no real reason to think about this yet. Just play, yeah. Just pass your turn. Hope oh. your opponent doesn't have anything. He finds an Ultra Ball, which he already had in his hand. But okay, his still. Hand pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So it looks like with a minute and change to go, it seems very unlikely that this game is going to end, but. He gave it a he gave it a heck of a shot, man. <laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah, uh, let loose turn one. Let a lone Remory, cross your fingers. And uh, in this particular case, Nidish, uh, Nidish's hand is pretty stacked. It not yeah. only contained a Buzzwell GX with a lot of HP, but it also obviously has uh, an Ultra Ball and I believe a Sycamore as well. I saw the look on Eric's face when Nidish played that Ultra Ball. I was like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes that shot. Yeah. All right, under a minute to go, 30 seconds remaining, actually. Really very little shot of either player winning here, but 
I mean, they're still going to try. Um, they're they're pretty aware of the clock, but at the same time, you you don't know exactly how much time is remaining down to the second. So there's that Brooklyn Hill uh, played right away. I don't believe Nidish's turn is going to end before the clock strikes zero. It doesn't look like it. Which means that uh, we're only going to see a couple of turns left. And I could very easily see both players just extending their hand as soon as the judge calls time. As uh, there's just no way either player is going to be winning this match. And uh, it's unfortunate to see that ending as we had very exciting games one and two. But it does happen. Um, sometimes games drag out a little bit and being able to get a full game three is not a guarantee. Yeah. There's that handshake, just as we expected. Both players shake hands and uh, sign the slip as a draw as neither player was able to get a convincing victory. One game apiece for, for both players. And then, of course, game three barely got underway before time was called. Um, just very powerful decks doing exactly what they wanted to do on uh, their particular game win. So when Rayquaza won, it won because it hit hard and it hit fast. Yeah. And then when Buzzwell won, it it won because